offensively for you? I mean, seven steals, did it feel like you were in a rhythm right there? I mean, did it feel like, you know, you were able to see the passing lanes and that kind of stuff? Yeah, I felt good. I'm starting to get really comfortable within our zone and um, reading it and being able to jump the passes. So I uh, got into a rhythm and I just stuck with it. How does it, is it different for you as a guard to play in more of a zone instead of a man? Because it seems like, you know, when you're a man, especially last year, you were really good. But now, what, how does the zone kind of change what you need to do, you know, at the top of there? Um, well, growing up, I've always been a defensive player, so zone man, it really doesn't matter for me. I, I'm pretty, um, I do pretty well in either one, so it doesn't really affect me. Kaylin, as well as you guys played uh, the first half defensively, second half not so great defensively, what, what, what went wrong? I'm glad you feel we played well defensively in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, be, better. Better than yes. you did. Correct. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> your positivity. Yeah. Um, I think they just did a good job being patient and finding the open person. Was it um, kind of disappointing going into the locker room only up by five, considering you know they pretty much had one girl that was scoring? Was that? I mean, did that play a little bit into how you guys came out the second half? Uh, I don't think so. I think uh, it made us realize that we need to focus on stopping her. That That's for sure, because I think we did a pretty good job outside of guarding her. So we just knew that we had to shut all of them down. We couldn't just let one person go off. What adjustments did you guys make in the second half? She got one bucket the second half, but then 24 ended up with 26 points. And that's usually their primary score. So what adjustments did you make for 21 and then what adjustments should you have made for 24? Um, well, we made sure that we kept an eye on 21 and made sure somebody always was there to contest her shots. Um, probably focusing on her majority of the time probably made us not focus on 24 as much as we should have. I think um, to answer that question, help the athlete out is this. What happened, I think what happened in the second half is they were keyed in because the kid was five out of nine, you know, and she didn't score very well. Correct, but they also knew that number two, um, right. Hannah, could could score as well. Right. I think Brian did a good job of stretching us out. And in that mix, since 24, who in the athlete's mind is an athlete when you're playing, just out there playing, you know that that kid's a player, but you didn't do much in the first half. So your focal, your focal point are on the kids who've been blitzing you, right? Mm -hmm. And so they started focusing on those those kids that they know they're shifty that can score. Number two got, you know, not only could she shoot, she got, she got us a little bit at the free throw line. Um, and so their focus started to be on those kids who really then stretched out our zone. That opened it up, I think, for 24, which is, and that's part of her game. There's a reason why the kid is, you know, um, the player she is, and, and her numbers are uh, incredible. Um, so to answer that question, help Kaylin, and I think that's a lot of what happened, is as a focus shifted, the kids that need to step up and score for them did. Um, as we shifted, we're always, we, I feel like we're just a step, we're always a step behind, you know, and it's really important for me that as I go back and I evaluate it, that I clearly understand how we got to that point, we're always a step behind them. It's like they were always ready to counter us before you know we got into a defensive flow and got the looks that we wanted. So. Obviously, it's a bit of an outlier in terms of shooting 58% for the entire game, getting to the free throw line 22 times, knocking down 12 threes, and shooting 57% there. Is it kind of is there still a little bit of notion that this is just a hot team that you really couldn't have stopped, even though they were getting some good looks? No, I, I, I went into this game knowing that this is a team that we could beat if we played smart. Um, I do believe this, though. They're playing the best right now. From film I've watched in conference, they're probably playing the best of all the teams that are out there. They truly are. you got to understand, this team played t at Texas A&M just, what, eight days ago. They, with five minutes left, they were only down by four. They were able to put up buckets quickly, quickly. Now, a couple of turnovers later, A&M was able to close out the game. But you're talking five minutes at A&M, then the turnaround closely contested game where they had to play against a quite a bit of zone at, at Arlington, um, but won that game. This team, their, their whole mission, I think, is no different than any, any one of us, is to win the conference, but they're just playing well, and they've always kind of been that team just lurking on the cusp of being one of the top teams in the conference. And I told the team this, and Kaylin can tell you, they're fed up with it. I think they're fed up with that, they, and they came in with a clear vision and, and thought process. But even knowing that, I still think there's some areas, I still believe there's some areas right now where they're deficient, where we can exploit them. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to have another opportunity with them at their place. Offensively, uh, you guys scored, um, I think it was the, your highest scoring first half all season with mm -hmm. uh, 44 points, I think it was at halftime. Um, and you had 17 assists on 25 um, shots made. Do you feel like this is one of your better offensive games this year? I feel like the, the first half was better. I, I struggled with the second half only because we lost our aggressiveness offensively. 
did a great job of getting to the free throw line. You know, they would hedge out hard. We run a lot of high screen. Um, they'd hedge out hard. We just weren't as aggressive turning the corners. I think there's some miscues offensively as to who we were supposed to hit. Things that we did well in the first half. Okay. Um, in the second half, it wasn't necessarily the defense they were running. They didn't really make any adjustments. It's just that we stopped going to what was working for us. And, and part of that honestly comes from when you get a little bit back on your heels from a defensive standpoint. That's kind of what shifted that shifted for us. Did they switch a little bit to a zone though to kind of they did. Make, they mixed make, it up. Uh, Ashley's work a little bit more so in the second half than the first half. I think we only saw a few looks in the first half, but in the second half they did. They did a good job, and that stifled us there for for a minute. It really did. I think with the, that particular lineup that was in, wasn't a good zone lineup, um, but for sure they did. One of the things I noticed that you guys did so well last game that this game you guys kind of backed off was being aggressive. You guys really didn't take it to the didn't take it and get those free throws. I mean, you attempted 24, but last game you guys were aggressive. You guys were taking it. Do you want to see more out of your team to, to be? I think most know? definitely. I think that's that's where we're going to get our. We're going. We need to get a lot of points off the free throw line, just because of who we are. We have some guards that are really good at coming off the high screen and forcing, you know, people to hedge or to switch. Especially with the new rules, gets you the free throw line as well as we have kids that can score back to the basket. It's not just Ashley Eze. Jacqueline Jeffcoat and Kalia Mays can score back to the basket. They need to get to the free throw line and be able to finish there for us. So that definitely needs to be a, a pretty substantial equation in our overall offense, being aggressive with our with our size. Ariel Anderson, mm -hmm. she had nine uh, nine assists to one turnover, which is great. But she only had a six points with one for nine shooting. Um, what do you need? What do you need for to get her to start scoring more? What do you think? Uh, I think I think for Ariel, she feels a lot of pressure right now as a young point guard, as a sophomore, <laughs> trying to figure out. Um, where does my team need me? She knows she needs to always push tempo. She knows that she needs to find the open players. But this is a kid who's a scoring point guard. So I think like most kids that are scoring point guards, they get hungry and they want to have the opportunity to be able to score um, their points. I think the biggest thing for Ariel is to be able to watch film. Film for her is what seems to work for her. Because there are a lot of different areas that Ariel does great things for us as far as pushing tempo, um, as far as her ability to be aggressive and get to the free throw line. I think it's a very good free throw shooter. We need her to continue to make good decisions regarding her shot selection, which comes honestly, that's maturity in film for Ariel. And then, as a former forward by yourself, how can you can you draw from your experience to get more out of you know Jacqueline and Kalia? Because it seems like right now they, they aren't giving you much. I mean, they're giving you the box house like you said last game, but outside of that, I mean, there's not much that you know in terms of scoring. I guess you, can you get can you work with them a little bit more? Do you think is there something you can draw from your experience to draw more out of them? You know, as a, I think um, one of the things you, I should bring out some old film. I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> I think. One of the things I think they're having a difficult time understanding is how to stay in sync as a group. Um, Coach Sue works with them quite a bit. But I think one of the things I probably do need to do is get back down there to, to help them understand what looks are there. Um, there's, some, there's some miscues, I think, offensively right now regarding their ability to be able to reverse seal, really understand when the ball moves from one side to another, how to seal somebody off to get that quick look. We're working on that. You know, this is the first time now that Coach Sue has six post players down there before. It was just honestly Ashley Eze. And so I think that's part of them understanding getting in sync together. But you're for sure right as far as, as we look, which group works well with the high-low look. Um, I still do believe that Jacqueline Jeffcoat is our best low block feeder as far as a high-low look. She can stretch people out. You know, you know, unfortunately, we don't have Koi Moore. She was getting that point because she can stretch people out with being able to hit the three. She's a very good high-low as well. I need Jasmine Box to continue to come along. The tough part for Jasmine is people don't respect her shot, so they sink back in and they're able to double, and I think that makes it a little bit tougher. Um, but their ability to be able to work with each other is going to be really important. But anytime right now we have Kalia Mays and Ashley Eze in and we have Eze feeding Kalia, it's not a good look for us yet. We're not mature enough right now with their game to be able to get there. I do think that we're going to be able to help them in that area. I mean, you guys had them all last year in practice. Is it different to try to show them tape in games what they're doing? Because you guys had, what, a whole season It's not the same. It's not this when, when student athletes transfer in. First, Kalia Mays and Jacqueline Jeffcoat, to be honest, you didn't play a, a ton at their respective schools. Um, that's part of the reason why they came to Texas State. But the other piece is that Kalia Mays um, was only a freshman. Jacqueline Jeffcoat didn't practice quite a bit because she had an injury as well there towards the end of her career at Oklahoma before she transferred here. So although they were able to practice, it's, it's different when you yeah. actually get in the game. And they both said the first couple of games are like, this is so strange. That's what they kept saying. This is weird. I don't know. I said, like, what do you mean it's weird? Because I don't understand that experience. They're like, like it's just different. We're like, it's like we're playing now, and they're playing for something. I think Kaylin can tell you their effort level is so much better in practice than it was last year because they weren't. There wasn't that carrot dangling. There wasn't. You felt like you were in, but you know, at times athletes may not feel like they fully are in helping towards a common goal. So I think that's probably made the biggest difference for them. And they've got it. They got to be game ready though.
You already know what you're going to get out of Caleb defensively every game. Is it all, obviously, it's a positive thing to be able to get something offensively from her. Talk about that a little bit. You know, I know Kayla talks a lot about her defensive game from high school because of the high school she went to. I clearly understand that and, and flip around what Coach does with Coach Walling. But I will say this, Kayla has the ability to shoot and score um, at any time, especially if it's a catch and shoot shot. Kayla can knock down that three. I think the more Kayla does that, the more opportunities it opens up for our high-low game, which then will honestly help their ability to be able to pass to each other because there aren't as many doubles or aren't kids digging in on, on any of our, our low block players. And so I'm excited for Kaylin to have this game. I, I know as a senior, I know I know Kaylin, she could probably care less right now that she had seven steals, 15 points. Should take the win and some bad stats over some great stats and, and a loss like this. But the best thing is, you know what, 16 more games. I think that group that we put in at the end still hustled. They still gave it all they got. They still tried. They understood we needed to get better um, because every single moment you have out there is really precious time. Thanks. Thank you so much.